Hello again, physics friends. I've been bitten by YouTube and clickbait, and so I came up with this title, Shaw's Theorem, the most important theorem you've probably never heard of. Um, okay, that's not necessarily fair, but now you're here, so listen to what I have to say. It is an amazingly useful theorem. Um, it's a very powerful one. Shaw's Theorem says that the motion of an extended object like a hammer or a tennis racket, anything that's not a point particle, can be expressed completely as in um, the combination of two different motions, the motion of the center of mass and the motion of the rest of the body in rotation about that center of mass. That's pretty amazing, right? So let's think about that and break it down a little bit. Imagine for a second we have a, a, a point particle that's being launched through the air and we have near the surface of the Earth, so we have gravitational acceleration, we know how to show that, you know, in the absence of air resistance or other forces, if this object is in free fall, the object will execute a parabolic trajectory. It's a very, fairly straightforward trajectory. But what happens if instead of throwing a point particle, you threw an extended object, like a hammer, for example? If you launch this hammer through the air, it would kind of twist and turn and move, and how would we describe that motion? Well, Shaw's theorem is saying, find the center of mass of this object. And we could imagine that the center of mass might be kind of up near the head. I'll represent the center of mass with this green symbol. Shaw's theorem is saying, treat the hammer as if it were a point mass, okay? The center of mass is then going to execute a parabolic trajectory in the same way that that point particle in the first example would, okay? And about that trajectory, the hammer's head and body might rotate, okay? So at any given point, though, you know exactly where the center of mass is going to be because you know where the point particle equivalent would be. And then on top of that position of the center of mass, you can just figure out what is the rotation relative to the center of mass, and then you can figure out where every piece of the hammer will be sometime later. So for example, sometime later, the hammer center of mass will be on this parabolic trajectory somewhere, and the hammer will be rotated relative to where it was originally. So this is great. Anytime we can take a complicated motion or set of motions and break it up into easier to understand ones, that's a win. And here we know very well how to do point mass motion, and we also understand how to talk about rotation about a fixed axis. And it turns out that the general kind of motion for an object like this, according to Charles's theorem, can be described by the combination of those two things, motion of center mass and rotation about the center of mass. In the context of angular momentum, and mathematically, we can write this um, in terms of the angular momentum of the system, right? So, so Charles's theorem is saying that the angular momentum of the whole hammer, in this case, or in some object in general, is equal to the angular momentum due to the translation of the center of mass plus the angular momentum due to the rotation about the center of mass. So far, we've talked a lot about how to find the angular momentum of a point particle that's translating. We now need to focus on how to write out the angular momentum of an extended object that's rotating. So that'll be the topic of future videos. Until next time, take care and be well.